Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 15th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ever wanted to debug software that was created for the Raspberry Pi on your x86 Windows systems? The challenge here is that not only do you need to run Linux on your Windows system, that's pretty straightforward with virtual machine or the Windows subsystem for Linux, but you also need to emulate the different architectures as Raspberry Pis are using ARM. One of our undergraduate interns now came up with a solution using QEMU. QEMU is different from virtualization. It actually emulates a different hardware and as such is able to emulate a Raspberry Pi ARM processor on your x86 Windows workstation. Emulation is not a high performance solution, but certainly sufficient for things like debugging, where sometimes a slower performance is actually preferred. Thanks to our intern, Alan Ingle, for providing the detailed instructions. If you ever used the tools on the Linux command line, you may have run into tools that sort of display dialog boxes or even something that resembles a Windows on a text-based terminal. In order to create these effects, the software likely used a library called nCurses, which is short for new curses. So this is a library that you find on every single Unix system, probably even some Windows versions or so on that of that library that you may run into. And Microsoft now published details regarding a set of different vulnerabilities that affect this library. These vulnerabilities have been disclosed, patches have been made available, but given that we now have more details available, you certainly need to make sure that everything is patched and up to date. The vulnerabilities can lead to remote code execution. In order to exploit this, an attacker would have to essentially hit some software that does uh, use end curses. And again, there's lots and lots of different software that does it and basically expose it to malicious input. If you have an interesting proof of concept exploit for a vulnerability that Microsoft patched this week, a CVE 2023-38146. This is an arbitrary code execution vulnerability in Windows themes. Windows themes are meant to change the appearance of Windows and usually not sort of considered executable files. But there is an interesting feature in these theme files where you can specify a .ms styles directory and that can be used to load a DLL. Now, typically that DLL is checked and that happens here. But there's one of those famous time of creation, time of use errors, where by the time the DLL is actually being used, it can be swapped out for something else, which in the proof of concept is code that starts the calculator. As an added benefit by calling the file a theme pack, instead of just using the .theme extension, the mark of the web can also be avoided so there is no warning being displayed. So be aware and be careful of any .theme or .theme pack files. And Symantec has a good write-up of what they're calling the 3AM ransomware. Uh, this is a ransomware, well, uh, that's being used if the lockbit ransomware doesn't fail. So if you do have some signature-based antivirus, as so many of us have, and lockbit is being blocked by your endpoint defense solution or whatever you call it. In that case, 3AM is deployed and apparently more successful in case lockbit is blocked. Lesson learned here, if an attacker attempts one piece of malware and it doesn't work, it they then may attempt to use a different piece of malware. And this is a very common pattern. So if you do see a blocked piece of malware, from an endpoint, well, 
always double check that this was the only thing happening because in order uh, to launch something like Lockbit and have it detected as an attack, the attacker probably first uh, got some kind of malware loader to run that can then uh, be used to load arbitrary malware. Well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again probably on Monday, but uh, I'll be sort of officially out on Monday. So not 100% sure if I'll get around to record something, uh, maybe a shorter uh, episode on Monday and then again, a full episode on Tuesday. And thanks for listening. Bye.